Welcome, foolish park goers. Enter through these gates if you dare, as the sweet smell of the churros loft through the air. The second you hear the all clear, that's when you know a theme park is near. This is For the Love of Theme Parks. <laughs> How would you rank the Magic Kingdom Mountains? So, okay, so we're talking about Splash, Big Thunder, Space. Are we including Seven Dwarfs Mine Train? Is that, I guess that's technically not like a traditional mountain. Um, See, the thing is like, I would say, oh, the original mountains, all this, but none of the mountains are original to the park. Yeah. So, but I would not count Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. It's, it's more of a hill, if you look at it. You can't mine in a hill. You mine in a mountain. I know. Oh, it's a cave ride. It's not a mountain ride. Yeah, it's a yeah, cave ride. yeah. It's a cave. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think there's many other <laughs> Disney uh, cave roller coasters or anything like that. But I wouldn't personally not count it. So, what would you out of the main three at Magic Kingdom? We're not talking. We're not going to include Everest or anything like that. But in, okay, just Magic Kingdom. In Magic Kingdom, what would you rank your three? Okay, so Big Thunder first. Okay. In space. Okay. Then Splash. Okay. Yeah. Um, I totally disagree. We have almost opposite lists right I here. I peeked at your list. <laughs> so I personally have Space, Splash, and Big Thunder. Yeah. Which sounds weird because normally when we go to Magic Kingdom, we start with Big Thunder because it's like yeah. a little classic all the way, you know. But, you know, I am 50% of the group that chooses where we go first. But I, I just, I don't know. I don't. I think the impressiveness of the rides for for Splash, at least, is better than Big Thunder. Um, just with all the animatronics and the amount of the, the steep drop. at the There's like a climax to it when Big Thunder is just the end is kind of like you go over Little Hill. Like climax yeah. is technically at the beginning of that, I guess. Even though they do have like, I don't know. See, I spend the entire ride on Splash so terrified, not knowing when the drop is coming. For some reason, even though it's so obvious when it is. Yeah. But, you know, whenever I go on it, I'm like, is this it? Yeah, just wait for the it? birds that you pass under. Is this it? <laughs> um, I don't notice most of the ride, honestly. It just kind of – Yeah. I, I, think, I mean, that's probably good with the context of what's in the ride as of right now. But <laughs> I was going to say, I might – I, I'm wondering if I'm going to be more interested in it once it's Princess and the Frog, but probably. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely think – but I mean, yeah, I think Splash is better than Big Thunder in my opinion, just because of the amount of stuff that's going on. Big Thunder has amazing theming, and there's a great story that's pretty not hit, like yeah. obvious whatsoever. Um, but I would put Space first, just because of you know that's a classic for I, me and sci-fi classic. I told type, you this you know. last time, but um, every single time we ride that ride, my jaw hurts. Yeah, that's weird. Because I. Like, I don't clench my jaw. I literally, like, I leave my mouth partially open and just, like, ah, <laughs> and just, like, hold it there. I don't know. I have no idea why, but I've realized this recently because we've been – we have been starting off with, with Space Mountain Yeah, we've instead. been switching it around. Um, and after I get off, I'm just, like, ow. <laughs> like, it hurts. Do you – so a, a question before we get into our main topic, but do you – when you're riding Space Mountain, yeah, do you – anticipate where we're going can you kind of no. tell oh, no. ever absolutely no you're just not. whipped around the whole time absolutely not i have no idea i have this track memorized so that's so that's me i did see a <laughs> bunch of videos of it with the lights with on. the lights on now so maybe maybe you could study before like yeah <laughs> i have go. to memorize the track yeah um but that's kind of leading into what we're talking about today we're talking about space mountain um, that's our main topic. It's a big one, probably the most popular other than pirates that we've covered already. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we're talking big mountain, uh, sorry, I'm <laughs> space mountain today, but big, before, mountain. <laughs> <laughs> big space mountain today. Uh, but before we get there, I just want to say welcome. My name is Ryan. My name is Isabel. Uh, we are for the love of theme parks. We run a YouTube channel, a TikTok. Uh, you're probably coming from TikTok if you're seeing this cause, uh, We've gained a decent following on there. So well, some some people on TikTok are mean. Yeah, some people are being mean already, but that's okay. <laughs> um, 
But yeah, go follow us on YouTube, uh, social media, Instagram, whatever, all that stuff. Uh, but then also, uh, thank you for being here. If you are here already, uh, thank you for, uh, tuning into our podcast. This is just another form of media that we do. Um, but yeah, today we are talking about space mountain and I'm going to be handing it over to Isabel to kind of talk about the origins of this very, very popular, um, roller coaster. And we are in coaster month right now yeah. still, uh, with week two of coaster month last week, we talked about Battlestar Galactica, human versus Cylon. Yeah. Um, we have two more weeks, the next two weeks scheduled for this month of June, June, 2021. Uh, and I will not be revealing what our next, our future topics are. You'll have to tune in <laughs> to see that. The original Space Mountain coaster is the one that's in Magic Kingdom. Like the one there is the original. Yeah, which is like normally the other way around for most yeah. Disney stuff. Yeah. And I mean, exactly. Universal too. De definitely they'll have something on the tram tour, then they'll bring it over here for Universal. Yeah, I guess I don't know that much about the history of Universal. Especially in Hollywood. Yeah, I'm you've very. I've never been there. And yeah, aren't I know really nothing that about in the movies. it. <laughs> but yeah, no, it is it is weird that it's kind of reversed for here. But yeah. I think this is one of the only ones that it's reversed for. Yeah, I was trying to think about other ones, but. I mean, like, they got Galaxy's Edge first, too. So, like, even now. I mean, but they're, yeah, they normally replicate things at the same time. Yeah. I think. And I'm I'm pretty sure the maybe Splash was, don't quote me on that. We're not going to look it up. But uh, <laughs> maybe Splash. But Big Thunder was definitely first over there, I believe. So, yeah. You mean Big, Big Thunder? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Big Thunder. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. We're talking about bounce. I'm getting them all confused. It's okay. Um, So, it's a steel dual-tracked enclosed roller coaster. Okay. Located in Tomorrowland. It opened January 15th, 1975, which is kind of crazy. Uh, yeah, that's... Uh, I mean, you can feel you can feel it. You can feel its age. Yeah. Um, it, it's it's weird because they have done a track replacement. They've done like a yeah. lot of, you know, they've done update. They've done upkeep, but it's still like, it feels like they could just technically use the whole building and build something new inside of it and it could it would still be space. But that's what they did in California. Yeah. So... I, okay, so this is weird, but... I know this is probably the case for a lot of things, but, like, I did not realize that, like, the majority of this ride, you are just propelled by gravity. Yeah, that's most roller coasters. Yeah, I just didn't think M about it. Most older roller coasters. I just, like, never thought about it. Yeah. Until, Yeah, you're like, not going to find a lot of, like, launch sections like you'll find on Hagrid's. Or <laughs> but I was, yeah. like, I, when I was looking into, like, how this ride technically operates and, like, it was bring which we'll talk about that later, but it was bringing up some interesting things where, like, if you are relying on gravity, if you have a car that's empty versus a car that's full of people, that car that's empty is going to go a lot slower than the car that's full. And then that brings up a lot of, like, issues. Never yeah. even thought about it. Um, I feel like a bad engineer. I think yeah. I need my – I literally just got my, like, engineering training, like, license. I yeah. think it needs to be revoked. <laughs> 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 yeah, I don't think there's a Space Mountain portion of the uh, the quiz or the test you need to take for that. But um, but yeah, it was the world's first completely indoor steel roller coaster. Was there indoor wood roller? I don't coasters? know. I was I was yeah. I was looking at the wording of that, and I'm not sure. There's a um, there's another there's a ride there's a roller coaster in I think in the UK. I don't know exactly where. It's, I've seen a video on it before because you know yeah probably on what Expedition Theme Park the YouTube channel I watch a lot. Um, but, uh, it's, it's like a mocking of space mountain, but it's like inside of a big tent. A yeah. Tent? It's, yeah. It's very, it's like very, not, I don't want to say unprofessional, but there's been other, like, I, I, I don't know if we have this in the notes, but like, there's other, um, places that have copied space mountain. There's one that's very infamous that I, again, cannot think of the name of that was at Cedar point. Um, that was like a bobsled ride that was outside, but then, um, there was a lot of sand from the beach that kept getting into like Ugh. the like bobsled Ugh. like uh, tracks. tracks. Uh, so then they put a building around it and made it like spaceport, like between Star Tours and Space Mountain. And they had Did all these lights in there. Spaceport. I don't. I don't know exactly. I was because like, that's actually one of the names that was thrown around for Space Mountain. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, no, it, it wasn't that. I don't know exactly oh. what it was, but. Um, which there's a there's a bunch of good videos on that one specifically, but it's just weird that like obviously one of the most popular roller coasters in the world, people are going to be copying. But this again is the first like the yeah, the, the yeah. main thing that people talk about, and they, I guess the record because people love talking about records for roller yeah. coasters is that like this is the oldest roller coaster in Florida. 
um, the oldest operating rock. Operating. Okay, yeah. yeah. There's yeah. probably some that some are, that are like overgrown. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was also the world's first roller coaster to be completely controlled by a computer. Yeah, which is pretty crazy for 1975. Yeah. But I mean, it's insane. Also, I just like, dang, they put a lot of trust into those computers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but also like. With the involvement of RCA, I've been I've listened to a few different um, yeah, podcasts yeah, read up they, about RCA and their involvement with like partnering with Disney. Yeah. They were going to be a huge, huge part of the Epcot like city, like mm-hmm. original Epcot, like when it was supposed to be uh, you know actual community of tomorrow, all that type of thing. Um, they had a lot of involvement with um, the contemporary resort as well. They were oh, planning really? on having you know um, a lot of different technology where. It involves like, you know, when people go to clean a room, like a maid service will be able to have, like you'll be able to check, they'll have a whole internal computer system in 1971 to be able to see which rooms are checked, if it's occupied or that they would have some like internal TV system. They were so ahead of their time. They were like pitching all this crazy stuff to Disney and they were like, yeah, well, you know, throw our name on everything. And like at the time, RCA was a huge, huge company. Yeah. So they helped fund the construction. Yeah. Um, and they were like the main sponsor. They for were the Space sponsor Mountain, right? from 1975 to 1993. Yeah. And then I have a question. Uh huh. But who do you think the next sponsor was? Um, I mean, you know, because I told you, but. But I've also seen pictures of. Really? Um, You've seen it? Like, yeah, well, the yeah. FedEx logo? Because guess what, guys? FedEx sponsored Space Mountain. I cannot under. I cannot fathom. Like, did they have the astronauts on the launch, like the launch hill? Or not the launch hill, the <laughs> lift hill. The lift hill, like just holding packages. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just just uh, uh, cardboard boxes. Yeah, like, yeah, no, that's um, so bizarre. Yeah, it's weird because there was like an old entrance, uh, like statue looking thing that had um, astronauts, people in astronaut uh, outfits, costumes. What do you call it? Like a uniform? What do you call somebody who's in a space suit? suit? Okay, so, space, a suit. space suit. You just said it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That were in a, a, one of the Space Mountain cars that was kind of angled really steeply. And there was that's kind of a spot where they had the sign and also like the the sponsor. And it, it's very off-putting to see at FedEx there on that specific spot. They don't have this, you know, statue thing anymore there. But you, you probably wrote it while it was sponsored by FedEx. I definitely did. Well, when 1994 was the, to 2004. You oh, definitely, definitely wrote definitely this. Definitely did. Yeah. I don't know if the sponsorship was too obvious. I know I remember at least probably seeing something in the line for it, but I don't know if it was out front. See, I have like – the way that I have gotten into like amusement parks and theme parks is that it has been much more recent. Yeah. Like since like 20 – like 15, I would say. Yeah. So I'm not used to this whole ride sponsor thing, and it freaks me out. Yeah, because it's like, just so bizarre to I, me. Especially with Epcot, with um, yeah. a lot of opening of new parks, they do have sponsorships for rides. Um, whether it be you know Nestle sponsoring the Land Pavilion, or whether it be um, NASA working with you know um, what is it uh, Mission, Mission Space. Space. Um, it's definitely something that is less used now that Disney has so much money. Yeah. Um, they don't need sponsors. They definitely (laughs) don't. Uh, but the transition between RCA and FedEx happened during the 1994 kind of redo of, of Tomorrowland. So the way Tomorrowland looks right now, which like you've been in the 1994 version or while they were transitioning. So, you know, like around the people mover, how they had those like weird silver gear looking things and all the signage was different. And like, no. you, you don't even remember that for our first, for our first trip, but between 2019 and now, I believe they're still, they're just finishing up the concrete switch over to the original version kind of, but the 1994 was all this like gear based looking futurism oh, and like okay. the shiny metals and all, but like purple okay. and green neon type thing. Um, and they're kind of reverting back to the. Um, the like future seventies futurism, yeah, yeah, fifties futurism even of that time. Uh, but to quickly kind of before we continue more towards Space Mountain, kind of talk about um, the opening attractions yeah. of Tomorrowland. So um, the Disney um, Disney World opened in 1971. Yes, uh, we are hitting the 50th anniversary. Very, very. I mean, Ooh. technically, we're in the year now, but um, we are not going for the 50th anniversary. No, we're not. We had we the opportunity to like we're yesterday. Like, oh, no, that's probably going to be we bad. Didn't book it, yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, 
But uh, the opening attractions in Tomorrowland were America the Beautiful. Do you know what America the Beautiful is? I mean, I've heard it because we've talked about it before, but like, (laughs) I don't know what it is. Um, It is a circle vision film that just tours you around America. And it used to be where um, uh, Monsters, Inc. Laugh Floor is. So if you look at an aerial view of Monsters, Inc. Laugh Floor, if you're in there, which you haven't been in there because it's been closed or you just chose not to go because you don't want to (laughs) go. Are they opening back up? Is it going to open back up? Yeah, probably very soon. (laughs) Um, But it's you could see the circle vision, you know, the the round roof ceiling type thing that's in there. And after that, they had... Um, I don't know if they had it here this is at Disneyland, but there's like a magic carpet tour of the world type thing. And then they had the Timekeeper, which was um, a animatronic show, but also a Circle Vision show. And it was a Robin Williams animatronic uh, robot, like a kind of a skinned looking robot. Yes. Yeah, I know. We'll, we'll, we'll <laughs> definitely cover that eventually. <laughs> like that. Uh, but that, that is a very cool uh, Circle Vision film that I wish I remember seeing, which I might have seen. But um, also Flight to the Moon. A very futuristic thing flying to the moon in yeah. 1971, which is a transplant over from uh, Disneyland. Its flight to the moon was a futuristic futuristic thing in the late 50s. So that's what they had there. Yeah. Uh, now it got moved over here and that was changed to Mars. And hadn't, then, yeah, I was saying, hadn't, it, we, hadn't we already landed on the moon at this point? Yes, we had already landed. <laughs> on the moon. I don't know my space <laughs> history, but I swear by 1971 we were up there. Yeah, so it, that one was uh, Flight to the Moon, and then it was, uh, I think, Flight to Mars. Okay. And then it was changed to uh, Extraterrestrial. Yeah, uh, which I wish I could have read in. Uh, and then it was uh, Stitch, and now it's nothing. So, um, but why, then also. Why'd they get rid of Stitch? I know. <laughs> a few other things. Uh, Grand Prix Raceway, which probably had a sponsor, but that is now Tomorrowland um, Speedway. Speedway, um, the Skyway um, station, which was above the bathrooms, right next, right to the right of the entrance of Space Mountain. That's oh yeah, where the, I've, I've okay. mentioned that to you before while we're there. Is, uh, it, is the station still there? Uh, no, they've okay. kind of made it into a single story. Uh, building, but also you okay. can kind of see where the ramp was. It kind of okay. went up on the side. Yeah, I was backside. gonna say I don't remember that being two stories. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I, they made they once they took out the Skyway. Uh, they were they were pretty quick to transition that one. But the, where the Tangle bathrooms is, they took a very long time for. Um, but also another attraction that I, I thought was opening day, but apparently it wasn't. If you had wings, which is where Buzz Lightyear is now, um, it was kind of like a hey, you know, mm-hmm. fly with you know this, you know. You could fly around the world yeah. now because future, whatever. Um, but that opened in 1972. Uh, and then in 75, along with Space Mountain, uh, the People Mover and Carousel of Progress. Carousel of Progress was moved over from Disneyland in 1975 for the yeah. kind of first rebirth of Tomorrowland. And then the second happened in 94. And now it's kind of happening as we speak, but nothing is coming <laughs> new. They're just changing it back to original. So something that I think is interesting that I think we might have in the notes later, I don't know, but I'm going to bring it up now, is that uh, Space Mountain was actually supposed to be where Carousel Progress is. Yeah, yeah, that that is something that I did see because that's where it is. That's kind that's, of at Disneyland. That's where it is at Disneyland. Yeah, so Carousel of Progress at Disneyland. It's that they're Tomorrowland. When if you walk through there, it's like really confusing if you're used to Disney World. <laughs> uh, but where Space Mountain is, that's where Carousel of Progress, or at least the building for it is. Uh, they had a few different other things there, and now it's like Marvel meet and greet stuff for Star Wars. Mm-hmm. I don't know what they're doing there right now, but. Um, and then, so basically, they flip flops. You know, that's the positions yeah. of it. And Space Mountain, the building there, I believe, is for sure smaller because they have less space. Yeah, I mean, like, the, the Space Mountain here is built like outside the like park boundaries. Yeah, yeah. And, and they just take you underneath the thing. Yeah, the railroad. The railroad. Yeah, the it's. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's kind of crazy that like going to Disneyland for the first time, you're walking in there like, oh, this is exactly like it, and then you see the castle like that's. That's smaller than Disney World's castle. What that's that's okay. It's and like, then you realize the entire park is like a third of the size. I feel like it's like when you're like on vacation and you're like going to like a Walmart or something in a, and you're in a small town. And you're like, this is not my Walmart. <laughs> and it's like it's like everything's like flipped around or it's like pretty close, but it's like off by a little bit, and then it's just like a much smaller, and you're like I would huh. like to say at least we have between those two parks. Yeah. They're, the lands are located in yeah. the same location. We're not like going to the left to go to Tomorrowland and right to go to Adventureland. That would be it's very kind of chilled out my spine. I know, and I think that's the same for all the like castle parks that they have. Um, maybe not any of the new 
maybe Shanghai's flipped or something, but I don't, I don't think we're going to be there anytime soon. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, you, uh, you mentioned they did a complete, uh, they, they, they were uh, yeah, replacing so it's, the track. They replaced the track in, or ride. Yeah. And they, so they replaced the track or the ride trains. No, the ride trains. I don't know the last time they replaced the track. I take that back. Okay. They replaced the ride trains in 1989. And that is when they switched from like the traditional like bobsled type thing where okay. they had two people. Okay. So you're like leaning so against they had, the other person. Yeah. So they had two people per like seat and there were four seats. Yeah. So that it, it did seat eight. Okay. And then they switched, they switched it, to it to six, which is what you see now in 1989. Yeah. And then in 2009, I believe, is when they, they just switched the um, restraint. What was it before? Just a seatbelt? So in 1989, or before 1989, it was just a seatbelt. Each person had their own seatbelt, though, which... I don't know how that works. I don't know either. <laughs> <laughs> but whatever. Because we've we've been on a ride, a roller coaster that has like a two seater. Yeah, and we both not not together, but separately with other. Oh, yeah, people. I wrote a page. <laughs> <laughs> There's um, at Six Flags Great America. There's one called the Wizard. The Wizard. The Wizard. <laughs> yeah, it's a very old ride, but uh, but I think that just has one la- like it has one. But seat yeah, it belt. has one giant seat belt. Yeah, and I know because they always paired me with my brother, and I was like. We're both too big for this. We were like 15 or something. See, it's funny because I wrote this when I was like, for the first time, when I was like 19. Space Mountain or the, no, the Wizard? The wizard. <laughs> Why aren't we just covering the Wizard on this know. episode? I don't. Um, for some reason, I think Space Mountain will get some uh, some more attention than the Wizard. <laughs> but then after, so after 1989, the restraints were like a like a U shape. So okay. it would like come over, like your legs would have to go inside the U. That's uncomfortable. Yeah. And then they switched it to the current restraint, I think, because. Which is you, good, but it's bad for if you have a larger bag. I'll say that. And also yes. if you have longer legs, it's kind of annoying. But the U, like the U shaped restraint, like if you have anything above average size legs, like I got thick thighs. I don't think I could have ridden Space Mountain. Yeah. I don't. That was probably <laughs> something they ran into, which of course they, as, as. Everything, yeah, every the America grows. Yeah, uh, they need to slowly update things and all that type of stuff. But um, I, but besides the trains, you know, they've done track replacements. I don't know when the last time they did it was, um, but they have had a, a, like just incremental upgrades to yeah. the to incorporate modern roller coaster technology. Which again, yeah. something we'll cover later because there there used to be some like massive problems. Yeah, and they have slowly kind of mostly fixed them. And then obviously there's been like cosmetic renovations to yeah. make things look better. Um, but yeah, basically uh, the going to the original concept and design yeah. of this ride, um, the success of the Matterhorn convinced Walt Disney that thrill rides did have a place in his park, which is crazy. If you don't know history of Matterhorn, it used to be a hill, <laughs> like not an actual roller coaster, but they had just a giant like picnic spot. But then people were, you know, teens were, you know, doing things they shouldn't be doing there. And they're like, okay, well, let's think about putting an attraction here. Um, and Matterhorn was a great addition. And there's some really cool old vintage videos and photos of Walt Disney riding it. it yeah. That was like the first steel track roller coaster ever, I think. Um, um, every time we go to Disney, and, like, my dad knows that we go to Disney. He asked me, he's like, oh, did you ride the Matterhorn? I'm like, no. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, that is not at this park. Wrong but park, Dad. Just tell him Everest is Matterhorn. I don't think he'll tell the difference. He'll be able to tell the difference. But, um, yeah, so basically Walt originally came up with the idea of a space-themed roller coaster after the success of the Matterhorn. Um, and it's kind of a different approach which it's almost the same concept because it's two different tracks that are running, which originally the idea was for four tracks, which is crazy, <sighs> which would be huge. If you know, I when mean, we get to the capacity is part, hard enough. Yeah. And the two tracks is still very high capacity. Yeah. Two tracks on 1975 computer technology. <sighs> is pretty impressive. <laughs> Uh, but due to the technology limitations and the company's focus on opening Walt Disney World, yeah. the project was postponed in Disneyland. Yeah. Um, and what, I think it's good that it opened Disney World first. They've got to have something that comes out first there. Well, yeah. I mean, they didn't have any thrill rides at Disney World either when it opened. And But then the park ended up being like more of a success for young adults and like teenagers than they thought it was going to be. Yeah. And so they're like, oh, crap. We have these people coming here. We need to give them a thrill ride. I think a big part of that is that Cal- – you know, Los Angeles area, younger adults 
are already, I know it's now more so than ever, but it's kind of, you know, affording to go to a theme park, even during the time and inflation, all Mm -hmm. that type of stuff is probably more doable. And you're going to have a lot more families traveling to Florida anyway from the East Coast. So I definitely think that's probably a a major reason, but it's crazy to think that they didn't have thrill rides at Disney World or Disneyland (laughs) um, for the first few years that are openings. Um, uh, But yeah, so uh, he realized it would not be feasible to replicate the Matterhorn at Magic Kingdom. I don't know if that's true or not. I know space wise, space wise, at, yeah. at Magic Kingdom, yeah. I I know because the their uh um what ten thousand league two thousand leagues twenty thousand twenty. <laughs> My bad, I'm a bad fan. I'm normally the one that doesn't know the number. <laughs> twenty thousand leagues under the sea at Magic Kingdom took up a lot of space. Um, it's pretty much from where it's like the whole New Fantasyland area. Um, which is like Seven Doors oh, Mind wow. Train and Be Our Guest and or well, part of Be Our Guest and uh, Little Mermaid and that was all that area was the um, the Twenty Thousand Leagues ride and with their kind of Mickey's at the time Mickey Starland area they could have put it there but Matterhorn just doesn't fit in a lot of these lands yeah. and they didn't really have room at fan- in um, Fantasyland which I think you know it would have been cool to see an update in Matterhorn. Go where Seven Dwarves is, but you know, I yeah. think Seven Dwarves is probably a better decision because then you have exclusive rides to each of the parks and stuff like that. Um, uh, but he decided to re they he didn't they decided to revisit. Yeah, I was say it wasn't Walt. Yeah, he died by that point. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but they decided to revisit Space Mountain, and it was originally called Space Voyage. Which I don't know why I found that so funny. I was just like, yeah, I'm gonna go ride Space Voyage, which I'm sure if it, it's a very like old like story. I guess it's just the name. word voyage. We don't yeah. like hear it very often. Yeah, not not at least anymore. I'm sure that was like half of the titles of adventure movies, you know, in the between 1950 yeah. and <laughs> 1970. Um, so I know that there. I know we've talked about this. Yeah. What does W E D stand for? <laughs> um, it's uh, Walt. Is Isney Walt? Isney, <laughs> Isney Disney Walt? <laughs> Engineering. No, I believe it's the. Um, well, I mean, it's. It's their engineering. It's their original Imagineers. Yes, that's what. It, yeah, but I, I can't think about what it's what it's. It's the Wedway for. People Mover. It's like yeah, wed, which. Uh, uh, Walt. We we're normally <laughs> never gonna do this, which we've tr- really been trying not to do this, but we are looking this up right now. Um, because, because now it's WDI, which is Walt Disney Imagineering. But okay, so bef- it's called Wed Enterprises. Yes, which stood for it could be like Elias Disney, Walter Elias Disney. The two I am first not- names of him and his brother. Walter Elias Disney. Is that what it is? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. That's why I, I was I was thinking that when we first brought it up, but I was like, should I say this? I think I'm wrong. I kept no, thinking. I was is. thinking the E stood for like engineering or something. Yeah, that would make sense because that's what their job is, but I guess not. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> um, so Wed, you know the people who designed Disney. Correct. Um, so they partnered with the Aero Development Company, who they did the Matterhorn. Yeah. Um, but. They, like, didn't really – it was basically – so for the most part, Space Mountain was designed in-house by WED yeah. because Arrow was busy with other projects. Except Disney or WED was, like, partnering with Arrow for other projects. So they would literally borrow Arrow employees off of their other projects and make them work on Space Mountain. <laughs> I mean, with a partnership like that and the amount of money going around – I know. It's, it's just funny. It's just funny. So that's why, like, even though it was a mostly in-house project, like – it's very much so an aero roller yeah, coaster. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, and again, the initial concept was to have four tracks, but you know, even at the time, two was not feasible. Four was definitely not feasible. Yeah. And um, it also required a lot of space that was just not available at Disneyland. Definitely. Um, and they wanted the ride to be completely controlled by the computer. So mm-hmm. basically, it needed like human intervention to stop it from running. I think. <laughs> Um, and the computer, they wanted the computers, they would have to monitor the location of each train on the track and keep them a safe distance from each other. And for that to be possible, the computers at the time would be need to be able to render, like, capable of rending, rendering the entire track, yeah. which was not feasible at the time. Yeah. 
Um, it's just, you know. Yeah, that's, I mean, with, with the partnership with RCA. It, at, at the time, I mean, as in like uh, when they originally looked into it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. But that's kind of why they shelved it, yes, is what you're saying. This is, that's why they shelved the project, sorry. Was not clear. So that's why they ended up saying between them just not having the technology and them working on Disney World, they're like, okay, you know what? Great idea. Let's save it for later. And then when they're looking for this thrill ride to go at Magic Kingdom, they're like, we have the technology for this now. We have the space for this now. Yeah. So Magic Kingdom kind of seemed to be the perfect place to make a multi-track system. Yeah. Or de- yeah. I mean, definitely with the, the space thing is for sure more of more of, like of the important yeah. piece of it is because you know again Disneyland has little to no space for anything I mean, I'm the, so shocked that they were able to fit Galaxy's Edge where they did the computer is definitely important as well <laughs> yes like computer yes yeah, yes <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah it's uh basically we were talking about the partnership with RCA yeah um so R- RCA helped fund the uh, construction I don't know what the exact split of that was so um they had signed a contract with Disney, and they were pro- going to provide all of the communications for Disney World Resort. Yes, yes. In their contract, it also stated that if there was a ride that they were, like, interested in, they would provide $10 million to Disney, and they would um, be able to, like, put their name on it, basically. Yeah. And they were interested in Space Mountain, so they provided about half. Actually, I think it was actually $20 million, so exactly half yeah. of how much Space Mountain cost. Yeah, that's that's... Um, we talk about pricing of rides here a lot. Twenty million doesn't seem like a lot, but at the time, I actually have the inflation for it. Yes, which would be. <laughs> oh, I don't know where it is. I think it's ninety-six million now in today's money. In it's still not that bad. I'm, I swear I wrote it down I somewhere, mean, but now I can't find it. You know, uh, Everest cost one hundred and fifty million. Well, the other thing I was seeing was that uh, it. Oh, now I have questions. <laughs> Because I was also reading that mm, – oh, no, never mind. Oh, my God. I forgot how to do math. Oh, that's embarrassing. I was like, oh, but it says a single beam costs $60,000. I was like, that's more than 20000 because I was getting the numbers mixed up. Anyways. $20 million. Okay, okay. <laughs> Sorry. No, that's okay. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> um, but uh, it costs more than it costs to build all of Disneyland. Like not now, obviously, but like when Disneyland first opened, it cost seventeen million to build Disneyland. Yeah, and it cost twenty but million that's, to that's, build Space But that's Mountain. also the inflation between nineteen seventy five yes, and nineteen fifty five. But I still think that's I still think that's funny. That is still yeah yeah that's, yeah especially when you're looking at uh you know the books that's definitely yeah kind of uh, misleading. But <laughs> <laughs> um but we did talk about it before about how at Disneyland it's in a different location. Yeah. Um, if, if you don't know this, fun fact, this is probably a very, very widely known fun fact, is that when you are on Space Mountain, when you're going to Space Mountain at Disney World, you are going down a ramp and then up I, a ramp. Okay. So I did not know this until you told my brother this fun fact when we were standing in, standing like in line. Like a week ago. I was like, huh, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so basically you go down a ramp and up a ramp because you're going under the railroad yeah. track. Uh, now, I don't think it goes under railroad track because Tron, would it would have to go through the Tron like light cycle area. So they relo- they're relocating the train track. So okay. The fact do you think that, they're going to redo the queue then or just no, leave it? No, I think they're just going to leave it. Okay. Uh, but it's just kind of an, not annoying, but it's it's a lot for I mean, somebody who is uh, in a wheelchair or a uses wheelchair, a mobility yes. aid. Yeah, uh, and that's kind of there's only one way in and one way out. Yeah, so it's kind of it's kind of annoying for that, but um, I definitely think that uh, I don't think they're going to update it. But I don't, it's just interesting though because like I mean I guess I think they did update at least the exit. Recently, I think they yeah no they did because like it's 2020. not it's not 2020 it was 2019 it was because they got rid of the the uh, moving walkway yeah a very a pretty long time ago because when we were there in 2019 um, they didn't have it I believe even oh, in 2017 I thought, they didn't I have thought it. they had it in 2019 and they got rid of it no no okay no. yeah so it was a moving walkway but it's not a moving walkway anymore for some reason. Uh, no, I think it, they just simplified it because yeah. those, those break down a lot, especially that yeah. one that's like of a quarter mile long. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the building itself is built 15 feet into the ground um, to lower its overall height, which you'd think they'd want to raise it to 
you know, make it look more massive. He didn't, it- they were worried about it, like, eclipsing the castle. That's why. They didn't okay. want it to be so big, so they placed it where they placed it, and they didn't want it to be too tall. 15 feet doesn't sound like that I much know, of a deal, I know. Though. Uh, and it is a centerpiece of, um, or I guess the the main attraction in yeah. Tomorrowland, but... Um, the building is pretty much all concrete. I did not realize this until I was watching these videos. And they're like, yeah, the base is concrete. The beams are concrete. The pillars are concrete. And I'm like, Ugh. It's a very heavy building. The structural, like, the structural engineering classes that I'm, like, getting nightmares from the structural engineering classes that I yeah. took because of, like, the stress and strain on concrete. But, like, these concrete beams were massive. Yeah. Do you want to talk about those? You kind of. <laughs> so they had these these giant to support the ceiling you know it's a slanted ceiling they had a bunch of giant concrete beams and they had to build these create these beams elsewhere yeah and then transport them there yeah. so during construction they were transporting one of the beams it was 117 feet long and weighed 75 tons <laughs> so that's how much each of those weighs 75 tons I'm terrified of Space Mountain. <laughs> 75 tons. So that's 2,000 times 75, yeah. which is 150,000 pounds. So I hope I got that right. I think Maybe. I got that right. Okay. Yeah. We're okay. We're moving on. Yeah. I was like, I, I was reading an old <laughs> newspaper article about it. Um, but so while they were transporting it, one of these like fell off of the trailer of the truck that was transporting it. <laughs> Just like okay. fell and just like rolled 75 tons. It landed like 100 yards from I-4. Okay. <laughs> you mentioned if that thing landed on I-4. And they determined the only way, literally the only way they could remove it is if they destroyed it. They couldn't move it. They had to just destroy it. Sounds like the end of like a Transformers movie. <laughs> like we must destroy this. Like they had to break it up to move it. Yeah. And – that single beam cost $60,000, and they had to just whoop down the drain. Especially at the time. That's uh, a lot. Yeah. But luckily, no one was, like, seriously hurt. It was minor injuries. Yeah. So that's it's, good it's, to hear, at least. It's crazy to me that, like, this idea, especially in the 70s, which now, I mean, obviously, they still do this. But bringing the, the amount of uh, truckers that they employed – for Disney World specifically yeah. it must be crazy because you see this where they're bringing in all these other pieces for all these attractions, stuff like that. Um, I think that's how a lot of places do it, actually. I No, no, but but like not even – like even more so than that. Like the Seven Seas Lagoon, they trucked in water for. That's weird. The uh, Contemporary Resort, <laughs> they assembled the rooms and then slid them into the slots that they're in. That's how they Ugh. assembled the Contemporary I don't like that. Yeah, it is very, very weird that they did it that way. But there's um, a really cool old uh, restored documentary on the building of the Contemporary. And they're talking about how it's like, you know, we assemble these rooms off-site and, you know, all the plumbing and electricals in place. And pretty much it's just, you know, hook up once you get there. And they call it – they refer to it as a chest of drawers. I feel like Like that would just cause so many, like, electrical issues and plumbing issues. Apparently it went pretty good. I mean, like, I'm sure they've done, like, work on that stuff since. But, yeah, no, that that was the first type of construction that they did with that. And they're like, this is a new groundbreaking style of, you know. But since then, I don't think they've done that. There's a a reason why it's not used. (laughs) Yes. Um, But, yeah, we were talking about the single beams. uh, And then after that, um, it was supposed to open in summer of 74, correct? Yeah. So it's supposed to be – they wanted it open, like, I think at the very beginning of the summer so they would have it for the summer season. Yeah, which is what they always do now. Yeah. But there were a lot of issues and a lot of, like, the transitions and drops were too rough because (laughs) – I mean, they're still rough, so imagine how it was in 1975, but because of pressure from RCA, they decided to do a soft open in December of 1974. Weren't ready, decided to soft open anyway. Um, They had a few injuries. (laughs) I mean, luckily, they seemed like minor injuries, but like there were multiple injuries reported. Like This was not an isolated thing, so then obviously they had to close it again until it was officially open January 15th of 1975. Also keep in mind, the crowd going there... And the fact that this is the very first thrill ride at Disney World, and it is in pitch black, like in yeah, the dark. Yeah, I mean, like, you're I don't also ha- just in there with a seatbelt. 
Which scares me. And another person. That was yeah. pro- most of it was probably people you hitting could, like, heads. Yeah, I was say you could bang your head against somebody else's so easily. They need to put you a helmet on you. <laughs> Maybe um, they could have kept it open, but they'd still have it, you know helmets required today <laughs> on the ride. <laughs> um, but what I thought was really cool is that they actually had like real astronauts come out for the ride opening. They That's had like cool. three like actual astronauts. Which is, last night you heard me like mutter under my breath that's so cool that's what i was talking about (laughs) i just i I don't know i love astronauts i thought it was really fun um and i i don't know and then you see mickey in his little space suit of course uh, i love pictures of the opening ride with like his rainbow space suit type thing and And there's people like all along the people mover track yeah um it's really people mover had opened probably around the same exact time yeah yeah uh, which we'll cover in the five episodes on people mover that we'll be doing uh um, but yeah, like I said, it costs 20 million to build. This would be over, um, 96 million in today's money. Yeah. Um, but now I would love to bore you with some operational issues that the ride had first when it opened and how they have fixed those issues. Awesome. Bore, bore away. So basically if cars started to back up in the unloading area, all the trains would stop on the track. <laughs> And there was nothing you could do about to fix this. Cool. So if you, cause you know, I mean like now if you think about like modern stuff, you just keep bringing cars into the station and they just stop behind the last car. That's all it does. It just yeah. stops behind the last car. And then as soon as one train advances, the next one goes in and then you're fine. Yeah, because there's usually like a – like a like when you go on other roller coasters, that's the area where they kind of have the switch track yeah. there to take trains off or put other trains on. And they also like – they have like a way to propel them. Yes. But if, if this So this happened, was all gravity. This was called a ride cascade stop. Yeah. And there was no way to, like, recover from this. You would have to, like, get – like, I think you had to, like, manually push people. Because <laughs> I've seen – there's a couple of videos online, uh, specifically at Disneyland, of the cast members, like, manually pushing these cars on the track. Because, yeah. again, it – it, there's no, there, there's nothing for it to, where it to go. There's yeah. no way for it to go. If it's propelled by gravity and it stopped because they have like brakes or whatever, there's no way to get it going again. But they must have prepared for this because if you are getting off Space Mountain, there's, you know, this, the, I, if you look at just the floor space without the kind of the, the metal barriers that you have, like the one spot where one car could get out, if you take away those metal barriers, there's an entire giant, like, flat carpeted, you know, retro carpeted area where I'm sure in 1975 that was just open and you well, could just get off and, like, that's how you do – like, it's not – it wasn't any organized thing, is, thing where you have a cast member telling you, hey, wait, stay seated all – like, you just got off because that's how it worked in the 70s. I mean, and you had seatbelts, but the, 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 this ride cascade stop used to happen, like, every single day. Yeah, of course. Of course um, it would happen because that, that's just how it operation. you know – that's how it should work uh, but safely, in, I guess. In 2009, when they kind of updated stuff again, but they only fixed this in 2009, keep in mind. Yeah. Which is not that long ago for them to fix this issue. <laughs> but I'm sure they had some, they didn't have cast members pushing people in 2009. Yes, they did. Oh. They okay, still have never cast, mind. <laughs> they still have cast members pushing people, except the um, it has changed so that they, when the ride stops, Disney's policy now is f- to evacuate everyone from the ride. Mm-hmm. You can't. Like, if they have to push the trains, they evacuate people from the ride. I would love to be evacuated from that ride I so know, much. I know. Um, but now it's possible for them to have a ride cascade stop and for them to recover. So basically, if trains start getting backed up in the unloading area, um, they have a way for, like, one will stop in the last section, one will stop in the section before, one will stop in the section before. And then to keep oh, trains okay. from going, because they've added, like, propulsion methods so that they can get going again. Yeah. And then the lift hill actually slows down. Okay. Yeah. So I, I was, like, trying to think about it. And I was like, I don't th- I don't know if I've noticed the lift hill slowing down. No, I don't think we But I also think they, they're pretty good about, about it now. Getting people off. Um, and then also, um, if the trains do start to back up and they're having an issue – uh, I saw a video of a cast member literally like pushing a train full of guests into like the storage area where they store extra cars and stuff. Oh, I'd love to be in there. That too. was spa- that was Disneyland as well. Okay. But I thought that was really interesting because um it's a way to keep like to keep this from happening and it's such an interesting Without having to completely redo the ride. It's such an interesting solution, you know? Yeah. Um, so they did add, like, things to, you know, uh, to make sure that the cars got enough speed now. Um, 
And then now the ride actually also automatically weighs each train. And if that's cool. I mean, they're roller coasters do that, especially for like launch coasters. That's what, that's like the, the thing to do to make sure you're launching at the right speed and not yeah. too fast, not too slow. Um, but it, if it's like, if the train before was empty, it'll hold the next train back a little bit so okay. that it doesn't like catch up to the other train and okay. cause, cause a problem. Yeah. And then they also added, um, some magnetic brakes sometime around 2012 or 2013, to um, slow, be able to slow the trains down if they're moving too fast, because again, it's gravity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but can you? They did not have like brakes to slow you down until like 2012 or 2013 if you were going too fast at any point on the ride. Well, I mean, that's probably what led to some injuries as well. Yeah. <laughs> but I just thought that was so interesting. I don't know. I guess I've never done like a deep dive into like the mechanical operations of a roller coaster before. Yeah. And this is like fascinating to me. Yeah. Well, I mean, th- imagine what it's like for recent roller coasters, I, <laughs> even uh, more so, uh, like, not just based off of gravity, based off of like. But I guess. Eight launches. And <laughs> I also just find it really interesting because it's just very interesting seeing how they're fixing problems that arose in 1975 without completely redoing the roller coaster, you know? It's very interesting to me how they're, like, changing little bits of the ride to make it not so that they don't have a ride cascade stop. Although ride cascade stops will still happen. They have been pretty infrequently now, maybe, like, once a week, once every other week. Yeah. Do you think – this should be like the question that we leave till the end of it. Do you think they, but it's not, do you think they'll be replacing No. the coaster inside No. when Tron is done? No. Why not? Because you got Tron. Why would you, uh, no. Why would you remove Space Mountain? No, not remove Space Mountain. Take the, inter- strip the interior and build two new coaster systems in there that are smooth. Will. That it, Like it's still Space Mountain. I know. I just don't think they will. <laughs> At least a track replacement, minimum, bare minimum. Minimum, I could see a track replacement. I think they're due for a track replacement. Um, I don't know. I just feel like they're not going to get rid of it. I okay. don't know. I think they will. <laughs> okay. I think by the time Tron is open in 10 years or whatever. Uh, <laughs> That's a good point. Should have been it's open by this October, uh, but it's not happening, obviously. <laughs> Uh, but I think they'll. I think they'll be confident enough. You to can be only. Able to... You can only attribute so much of the weight to the pandemic. At some point, it's just like. Yeah, and you again, had enough time. <laughs> again, this is we're touching upon a lot of the opening of yeah. these parks and all this stuff, which took you know between one to two years to build. Yeah. And now we're seeing Guardians of the Galaxy in its what eighth year of from concept to where we're at now, or something crazy like that. You know. Um, but first, we, we're actually – we're going to be moving on to the ride experience itself, which yeah. I hope most of you listening have experienced this ride. If not, spoiler alert, which, again, this is one of the most popular roller coasters in the world. I'm sure you probably already know what it's like or at least seen some imagery from what you can see on this ride, which is uh, probably from the beginning spoiler of Spoiler alert. You can't see anything. <laughs> yeah, you can't see anything very much of the ride. But you enter through a what they call a star tunnel that takes guests underneath – Walt Disney World Railroad. Yeah. Um, does it? Oh, wait. No, you're talking about the line. Yeah, okay, this, this is the line. line. Okay, yeah, yeah. We talked about that already. Yeah. I was thinking that, like, when you first get on the ride. No, no, then, no. Like, so so it know. takes you through Star Tunnel, and then there are space windows. Yeah, so when you're when you're <laughs> passing these, you know these windows if you've been in line of this. The um, ones that make you nauseous yeah, so or make you fall over. <laughs> You've got these windows that have this weird like. Uh, it's the exact same effect that the 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 busts in the the haunted mansion library have. Yeah. Except it's with a star field, and it's like. Ugh, yeah, and, it's, and you there's some sometime which you just saw last week. You can see a yeah. a, a ride vehicle pass by. Yeah. Uh, which they have updated, or at least they repainted to look like the newer ride vehicles. Yeah. Um, which is really cool. But then they also have – they use in line, if you do recall, from mid-2000s, they did uh, – up until probably a few years ago, they had these interactive little shooter games because it used to get really backed up because of fast passes. Um, I don't think they removed those because of COVID. No, I think that – yeah, they pro- – I think they removed it in like 2019. Do you remember seeing them when no, we were on a trip in 2019? Not. So probably um, a little before that. I think they removed them when they introduced the Disney Parks app because – Oh, yeah, you can play not like you get reception app. too good in there anyway. <laughs> True. But it, but everything I was reading was like, oh, but now you can play on the Disney Parks app. And I was like, can I though? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. It's never really working how it should be. Uh, 
But yeah, that's pretty much the entire line um, experience. Then once you get to the end of the star tunnel, it kind of zigzags a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and then you get to this kind of break off point between the two different tracks. And in between the two tracks, they've got a like a control room that's actually a room, but I don't even think they're real windows. It's, it must be some type of, you know, staircase up to where the people mover is because people mover is up above that area when it circles around. I have no idea what you're talking about. I have People no Mover idea. goes into Space no, Mountain. No, I know that. I'm aware. But the control room, I don't know what you're talking about. It, yeah, it's, it, it looks like a control room, but it really doesn't look like okay. a control room. So once you pass this like control room type area where you divide yeah. off, um, there is an alpha and an omega side. Yes. Uh, which, do you know which side is on which? No. Um, <laughs> I was not prepared for this question. I believe question. alpha is probably on, on the left. left. I, yeah, I, that's I'd what I would like what naturally is. assume, but I'm not sure. I should... I'm not prepared. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, and one track is 10 feet longer than the others. Yes. Alpha is 10 feet longer than yes. Omega. So I guess Alpha is the better, even though. But besides the like length, which I think is very interesting, everything else is identical except the length. You know, the height, the drop, the duration, the G-force, the top speed, all of it, identical. Yeah. No, I mean, that's pretty crazy. And before we get on the ride to give you all those specifics that I'm sure you guys are itching to get. <laughs> All of these G's and top speeds and all that stuff. Uh, one thing I do want to talk about is my favorite part of the line, which is this area where you do the zigzags back and forth before you get back on there. Uh, and the theming of the walls, which I love talking about every time we're in there. It feels like you're inside of like this like 90s, like I, I always talk about they're, they're the moon shoes walls because they have that like, like. I don't know. I had Is a it bunch the of the color scheme, the color scheme, the like shapes that they use. It just, it's very, it's like, it's like Buzz Lightyear Star Command type feeling, but without mm -hmm. having it be too Toy Story feely, if that makes sense. I don't know. Kind of. It reminds me a lot of toys growing up and <laughs> yeah. other things like that. Uh, but I really love this area and I hope they don't update it. <laughs> um, I want it to stay the way it is exactly. But the height, I guess, once, so you're on the ride. Actual yeah. ride experience, you go through a, a tunnel. Yeah, which we, like a light tunnel, which is like light you, tunnel. Like it's kind of taking your, off, I guess. Yeah, it's kind of like going into hyperdrive on uh, on Millennium Falcon, but not really. Uh, and then you turn a By corner. By the way, we did really well on Millennium Falcon. Thank you. Yeah, we did really, really well the other day. Uh, I I have a picture of the score. I don't remember. I what will it was. be accepting your. Thank yous and your Thank you rewards. for your service. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but after this, you turn around a corner. And they take your picture, and I know it's yeah. there every time. You never know it's there. Nope. Uh, <laughs> I know exactly when the picture's taken. Never remember to post. Um, and then you you go up a lift hill that's got a spaceship that's semi themed after space two thousand one Space Odyssey, which I still have never seen. I haven't seen either, and I know it's like the most cinematic. Like it, it it's You've very. Never seen it. I've never seen it. No. That's weird. Um, it is weird that I haven't seen it. I'll, it's not weird that I haven't it's, seen it. It's, it's been on my list for a very seen. long time, but. Um, after that, you go over the lift hill, and then you can't see anything for a few minutes, and then and you go you just to kind of get you get thrown around. <laughs> which I've memorized the track. I think I said that before, yeah. but I have at both sides. I could I could always sense where we're going. I've probably ridden that ride between thirty and fifty times because usually I'll ride it twice on a trip we take down here, and I am twenty five. And if I've taken one trip a year, one every other year, I've ridden it close to my age or more. I so the only part that I like know is towards the end when they like to send you in a spiral. <laughs> yes, it, it's like where 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 exactly. Rah, rah, rah. That's the part yeah. that I have it memorized. Goes, but then you also there's another tunnel as well, a yeah. red tunnel. I yeah. just guess like oh we're going back into yeah, regular we're landing. Whatever. <laughs> uh, and then there's at the end of the red tunnel, it's like a like a really yeah. bad sound quality <laughs> on like 1975 speakers that plays. And I I mean I I like I like how that's still the same way. I don't want them to update. Yeah. Update that like uh, they have like hyperspace mountain over Disneyland yeah. and you know I want it, I want this to stay the way it is yeah uh, even if they do a track replacement but I still want it to still have that yeah that seventies <laughs> space feel to it I definitely want that to remain the same um, but yeah once uh, we're talking top height of nine ninety feet crazy I know crazy Massive. for the time. Um, a drop of 26 feet. Wow. That's insane. And it's only 39 degrees. Like that's, that's not bad. <laughs> yeah. Um, duration total is two minutes and 30 seconds. G force is 3.7, which I think sounds low. Uh, you get a this. lot, of, you get a lot of airtime moments. That's for sure. Yeah. 
Um, top speed of 28 miles per hour. Speeding. In- yeah, speed, speed demon. Speed demon for the time. Uh, now, of course, there are rides that go over hundreds yeah. of miles per hour. Well, not hundreds, hundred miles per hour. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, 200 miles per hour. Um, but yeah, you basically, you get back to the the end. You disembark and you could scan in your photos. I did not know that you disembark literally directly underneath where you got on. Isn't that cool? The unload station is directly underneath the loading station. Yeah, yeah. Because when you're, when you're walking the... The long path, which used to be moving walkway back, you don't go down and up yeah, under the track. You just go, go up, go up yeah. the entire time. That's which interesting. I never thought yeah. about that. Um, so yeah, that's basically uh, the entire ride experience. The trains themselves. Um, we kind of talked. We about talked this. about that already. Um, but rider capacity is something that is should very, be addressed. It's very so. I don't remember the exact number, but like th- theoretically. Maximum rider capacity is over 2,000 riders an hour. Yeah. And, like, even, like, a lot of newer roller coasters cannot have as many trains on the tracks as Space Mountain can. Space Mountain can have, like, five trains on the tracks at a time per track. So that's 10 at a time considering both of them. Yeah. So that's, like, even so though, interesting. Even though the trains carry only six people each, that's still. They can be launched every 17 seconds. Yeah. So if people well, get in fast enough. Li- lift hilled every. I mean, like. Launched out of the okay, okay, okay. Not launched, but you know, not a launch coaster. (laughs) Launched. It's a rocket ship. Yes. (laughs) So they can be like sent off every seventeen seconds a piece, theoretically. Yeah. Um, which is super interesting. Um, and the only way to like delay that is like if a cast member like delays it, which makes me a little nervous. But (laughs) yeah, or if somebody's really struggling getting there, you know, they this one does require a transfer. Um, if you are. Yeah. Um, so we had we had um, one of my family members, family members, um, who, re- who was at Disney recently, who had recently had a hip replacement. Yeah. So he was in um, a scooter, and obviously they had disability access. But then they were like, he, they went to ride Space Mountain, and he had to walk. Yeah. So <laughs> the what, entire ramp. Do you want you want to talk about this disability access? fault that they have in their yeah. system that like there is a way around but you need to know before you ride space mountain specific well, obviously other rides too but. yeah so basically they will ask you if you can transfer which meaning meaning can you, can you get out of your wheelchair you're seated into yeah can you get out of your wheelchair your scooter your mobility device to get into the train yeah except it's space mountain they ask, can you transfer when you get to the front of the building before you enter the building? And anyone who's been on this line or in this line or on this ride knows how long of a line it is. Yeah. So this isn't like like when you're going on, like I know you they do have um, you know, handicapable trains yeah. or uh, vehicles for let's say Winnie the Pooh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Where you could you could get a, you know, a wheelchair yeah. on there. Uh, and they could secure it, everything like that. This one, obviously, they're not going to have yeah. a roller coaster car that has that ability. But um, in that case, usually it's like, okay, well, we're going to take you up the exit, have you yeah, do exactly. a, you know, a virtual um, queue, scanning like, magic uh, band. Spaceship Earth is a perfect example of yes. that. Yes. Yeah. They so have – you go, like, basically through the exit is their, um, ha- uh, their, their handicap accessible area. Yeah. And you'll transfer there and they'll slow down the cars, whatever. And, yeah, stuff and you like will that. get – Directly off of your wheelchair or scooter or whatever, walk maybe five, ten feet into but the car. The case with Space Mountain is that they will say, Can you transfer? And that is what they should be saying is, Can you walk a mile? Yes. Uh, because that is what they're having you do. And a lot of people who are using disability access and have a mobility device cannot do that. Yeah, of course not. And I, I'm just. I, I, Disney's usually so good about it that it kind of astounded me yeah. that this even happened. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so if you are somebody who needs to use disability access, like keep that in mind and ask them if there is a um, complimentary, complimentary wheelchair that you can – so you can transfer from, from your scooter to Disney's wheelchair and then you can go through the line on Disney's wheelchair and then get off yeah. a, of the wheelchair and then get into the car. Yeah. That is an option. Um, it's definitely something that they, at least for this ride, they should have a better system in I place. I did um, when we rode Flight of Passage the other day. Now we're just talking about uh, disability access. That's fine. But um, we were like, they we were in the same room with a lot of the disability access people. Yes. Um, and they were asking them, "Can you stand for like five minutes? Is that okay?" So yeah. I thought that was good. Yeah. 
Um, but they need to be doing something similar on Space Mountain because, like, the flight of passage, like, waiting area is nowhere near as bad as walking Space Mountain. Yeah, no, of course not. So, um, yeah. Yeah, and it's – it's it's other than that, I mean, I love the music in this line. I, it's a great ride. It's a great I ride. I think – no, no, yeah. Overall, we're not trying to like down, down. No, just I yeah. just feel like we should. <laughs> it, it, there needs to be a warning for people, especially people who are not familiar with disability access yeah, or familiar with Disney in general. Yes, uh, to know that this is what happened. You go down this. It's a very long. You know, the 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 person we were talking to about this hadn't been to Disney in a very long time or at all. So it was like a like a shock when you turn around this yeah. corner. It's like uh. Yeah. And you can't turn around because there's other yeah. groups behind you and COVID and all, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, that's. And, like, if you just had a hip replacement, you can't, like, climb over the, like, silver barricade, walk down fast pass. Also, you get to a certain point in the line, you're in the middle. It's just as far to turn around. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, just be careful. And um, if you are unable to walk distances like that, ask Disney, whoever the cast member you're talking to. Ask them if they have a, like a, a complimentary wheelchair. It's not like complimentary, but it's just it's one to transfer you from your scooter to. Which the line. I think for most attractions they do have. Yeah, I've definitely um, seen them. Yeah. Um. So just I would keep that in mind for if this is something that you do uh, uh, utilize on your trip. Yeah. Um. And one thing to kind of wrap everything up, we do try and kind of end start and end with yeah questions for these podcasts to kind of I don't know it's weird to start and it's weird to end so yeah. I guess we're gonna just tag a question on the end before we talked about the mountains and how we'd rank them would you say so as much as like you don't rank space mountain yours is for you space mountains in the middle would you say though i guess throughout pop culture and throughout i uh, just theme parks amusement parks in general do you think that space mountain is the most famous roller coaster in the world see i don't know <laughs> because if you are removed from disney culture if you don't grow up, grow up around Disney. Come on, you know Space Mountain. I did though. not know Space Mountain. You didn't know what Space Mountain was? Not until we wrote it. Are you kidding me? No, I had no idea what Space Mountain was. So I don't know. I guess I just consume different media yeah. than you. I because I, I know I know I am a Disney fan. I've been a life, lifelong Disney fan, but also I feel like I've seen Space Mountain a lot of other places. There's a famous quote from Ric Flair. Uh, which is a not very appropriate quote, but you could get around it because of how he says it. He, he, I think the quote is like, I'm probably misquoting it, but he says, um, you know, Space Mountain is the oldest ride in the park, but it always has the longest line, which is a weird, I don't, I don't know exactly okay. what he means by that, but it's like, like that's, there's all, no, it's like, not. I know, I, but that's, <laughs> the idea is that he's saying that he yeah. is comparing himself to Space oh. Mountain. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, <laughs> I know. Ooh. I know. It's, I just got it. Yeah. <laughs> it just clicked. <laughs> yeah. But it's it's like, but there's also like other rap songs and stuff that have Space Mountain. Like, I'm just, I'm surprised that you hadn't heard of it before. I was extremely removed from Disney growing up. Yeah. Because I'm my sure your parents were like, no, don't, don't <laughs> yes, show her Disney. Yes. Like we don't want to yes. take her. Yeah. Not, not want to take her there, but it's just like, you know, they're like, no, we don't want to go on a Disney vacation. Don't show them Disney. Yeah. Like don't watch. We're going to skip this full house episode, like for no reason whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, I mean, I think it is the most famous roller coaster in the world. Other ones would be probably like, I mean, it's definitely iconic. The, I don't like, disagree with that. Like, I mean, King Dakka, because of like a lot of them are like record breaking coasters yeah. that would be there as well. Human versus Cylon. No, definitely not <laughs> Human versus Cylon. But like, I mean, that, I mean, Rock and Roller Coaster is pretty famous just because of the, you know, location as well. Another Disney ride, Matterhorn, I guess, would be the only other yeah. one. Or maybe like the Big Dipper, which is like an old tradition. The Wizard. Not the wizard, not the wizard. <laughs> Maybe something on like Coney Island from the back yeah. in the day, but I definitely think uh, in since the mid seventies, this is probably one of the most popular, if not the most popular, famous roller coaster in the world. Um, which next week we will be touching on lesser popular, obviously yeah. because if this is number one, we're not going to be hitting number yeah. two next, or you know. Uh, but make sure to tune in for that. I don't know exactly where we're going to be. We were talking about some Six Flags, maybe some universal roller coasters that are local to us here. Yeah. Um, but make sure you tune in next week for that. We definitely want to cover one from our like home park. Yeah. We're, we're, one of them will be from um, Six Flags Great America. If you are familiar with it, great. If not, 
uh, the one that I already have written down that we're probably going to be doing is a definitely good one and good to tune in for a lot of like, we're going to have a lot of more personal stories yeah. on that one just because. I've cried on this roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, it, at the time, it was a record-breaking one. So if you guys want to maybe speculate on that, let us know. <laughs> uh, but uh, I'm going to do our quick end plugs. This is going to be the last minute. If you guys, guys want to skip this, feel free to. But make sure to subscribe here on our podcast. Make sure to leave a review if you've gotten this far. I'm sure you probably already left a review. But make sure to do that wherever you get their podcast. Spotify, Google, uh, Apple Podcasts, um, YouTube. Stuff I don't know like if you that. can review stuff on Spotify. I don't know either. I only use Apple Podcasts. <laughs> Please review where you can review. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but again, thank you for being here. All of our socials, yada, yada, yada. Um, for the love of theme parks, that's who we are. Uh, check us out on YouTube. Check us out on TikTok. We already don't need too many more followers we're, on there at We're this close point. to being able to join the creator fund. Yeah, so. on TikTok. So yeah. make sure you go do that if you haven't already. I think we're like 2,500 away. There is a chance that we might be hitting that before this podcast comes out because yeah. of today – uh, and another video, a few other videos that we're going to be filming still, today. Still follow though. That'd be still nice. Still follow. Yeah, no, it'd be, we would appreciate it regardless. Uh, but again, thank you for being here. Uh, we will be back next week with another installment of our coaster month. Uh, and then again, after that, and then we'll be heading, uh, we'll be doing a special 4th of July episode. We're going to do something probably Disney that has to do with 4th of July, uh, for the first, uh, uh week of July. You're looking at me really weird. Do you have any idea what it might be? I'm worried. <laughs> yeah, it's it's one of two animatronic yeah, shows. <laughs> so uh, get ready for that. Uh, <laughs> and I have, I have things to say about both. So <laughs> Yeah, so anyway, uh, uh, thank you for being here. We will see you guys next week. A warm welcome back to those of you who made it. And a friendly word of warning. Something you won't find in any guidebook. In order to keep up with new episodes of For the Love of Theme Parks podcast, please subscribe. You can help support us by following us on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram at For the Love of Theme Parks. We'll see you soon. <laughs>